G'day guys, Cam Wild Wild Touring. Hey, if you haven't watched the last couple of episodes, do yourself a favor and catch up on them. It's been pretty epic, and that'll explain where we're starting from today. So it's been a few days and about probably 130 odd kilometers since we left the air highway, the Nullarbor, and we've been in full drive ever since. Um, yeah, we're three days in now and we've seen one other person while we've been out here, so it is fairly remote. Right now we're somewhere between the Baxter Cliffs on the Great Australian Bight and Esperance, somewhere along that coast. And we've got 50 k's or so to do along the Telegraph Track today to get to Israelite Bay. Now, the Telegraph Track in Western Australia, other than the name, it's got absolutely no similarities to the more popular telegraph track in Queensland, which I haven't driven and I'd love to. Unfortunately, overnight, we've had about 16 hours of rain. It rained continuously through the night as we were in our swags. It wasn't forecasted to do that. It's a little bit unseasonal, but we're gonna be driving across clay pan country, salt lake country, and it can be pretty treacherous when, it's, when, when the ground's sodden. So, We'll see how we go. It may make for a more interesting journey than it should have been today, <laughs> but we've got 50 Ks or so of that to get to uh, Israelite Bay. I'll tell you a little bit more about the Telegraph track once we get in the car. We've got a bit of a pack up to do and um, we'll hit the tracks. Tell you what, this has been cooking my OCD. That rubber mat that I put down. <laughs> The whole thing, as everything's bouncing around in the back, which hasn't been bouncing around too bad actually, but as things are moving around in the back, that rubber mat has slid to the side and all the weight's on top of it and I don't want to have to unpack everything to move it. So I think one of the things when I get home is I'm going to put some Velcro backing or something on that rubber so it doesn't shift anymore. Because that, I don't know, it just annoys my OCD. I cut it perfectly so it fit nicely and it's now it looks like a dog's breakfast. Otherwise, everything else is working really well. I do need to get some solar up on the roof because I'm just not doing enough driving to recharge um, this battery system. It's a big battery system, so I've got plenty of capacity left, but I'm just never getting it to 100% um, with the DC-DC charger. I really need that solar up top, but that's a couple of weeks away. It's all booked in, so it should work nicely once that's done. Plus, I'm running the inverter overnight, charging camera gear and stuff, so and cooking on the induction cooker uh, most of the time. So it's, you know, I'm consuming a fair bit of power. Anyway, this is a good little camp spot. Nice and um, sheltered and private and that. It was wild down on the beach, so it was nice to be off the beach and stuff. Out of the wind a little bit, still breezy. We pushed as far up the beach as I reckon we probably comfortably could. The weed was just getting so deep yesterday. I don't think driving on the beach from here to our next stop is a good idea. It was just sl quite slow going with all, all the weed and the rocks and the beach was getting narrow and bumpy. So I think we'll stick to that inline track and um, we should make fairly good time to get to the next campsite and have a bit of explore around there. But yeah, I'll get this swag away and we'll hit the road. Oh, and now I was talking about that uh, rain being not forecasted. Before I do a trip like this, I do quite a bit of planning and preparation and research and stuff. So, and part of that for most of these like bigger trips is I'll print off forecasts as close to the date that we're leaving so that they're relevant because extended forecasts never are. So I'll print off forecasts. I'll print off um, high tide, low tide charts. So I know what the beach is going to be doing. And just like, you know, the itinerary, the message I would have sent out to the boys about what we're doing. A little bit of information about the area, just, you know, so I can tell the lads or tell you about, you know, the history of the area and for interest, you know, for myself as well. So, yeah, do, we do um, put a fair bit of planning into these trips, but the weather, especially along the southern coast, super unpredictable. It's, you almost get like Melbourne weather down here. Like it, we woke up freezing this morning. It was raining. And now we're getting blue skies and I'm starting to get hot and I'm thinking about sunscreen. So yeah, the weather changes pretty quick. On that note, awning's probably pretty dry now. So 
I'm gonna put it away and we'll see what the day brings us. Hopefully not too much mud. So the Telegraph Line was commissioned in 1876 and it ran from Albany all the way into South Australia. So back then they cut this track to run this Telegraph Line. It was bush poles and a single strand steel Telegraph Line. That stood for about 20 years and then around 1896 they replaced it with steel poles and um, twin uh, strand duplex uh, metal wires. I don't know a hell of a lot about that, but um, I'm regurgitating what I've read on Wiki on um, Wikipedia there. <laughs> anyway, tracks open to four-wheel drivers and, and recreational campers and stuff now, which is fantastic. Most people do the run that we're doing from basically from Esperance to Israelite Bay, and then from Israelite Bay, uh, you can cut down to uh, Point Culver, Bill Bunya Dunes, like we did. You can actually go even further east along the top of the Baxter Cliffs to Tulina Cove and Twilight Bay, and then exit through the bush back up to the Nullarbor. And I would like to do that other side of this track on another trip, but that involves 200 Ks extra of, um, of bush track, which we just didn't have time to do this, this time around. Anyway, where we're going today, Israelite Bay, there is still a stone telegraph station there from 1896. Uh, the remnants of it there, there's a jetty, there's an old um, postmaster's house. I think there's a bush um, cottage there that the postmaster lived in. So we'll check out all those things. We'll probably camp somewhere around there. And if the track continues as good as it is now, we're gonna be in for a pretty good day. into these designated tracks because that's going to be the most compressed ground and the least likely to get us into any trouble. So these are the original telegraph poles. Wooden poles. This one's been repaired at some point. Wooden poles and steel wire and the remnants of them are still out here pretty amazing that they're still standing after 150 years but this telegraph uh, line was used for 50 years until that the tr uh, transnational train line went in and um, made this redundant there's a heap of these scattered out here obviously some of them have been smashed by white ants um, by bushfires and stuff like that but it's cool that that sort of history is still standing. Also, I've just noticed that we're standing on a, a reef. This is like some sort of um, limestone reef and there's still shells and stuff everywhere, which is pretty cool considering we're a couple of k's in from the coast right now. But there'd be fossils and stuff all through here. It's pretty nuts to think the waterline was this high at one point. But you see that all over the Nullarbor actually. You see like even way out on the air highway, which is, you know, 70 k's that way. There's still shells and, and um, marine fossils and stuff from when the ocean used to be that high. We were back into the cars to push on for another couple of hours to Israelite Bay. And that is why we stick to the tracks. We don't deviate, deviate off them too far. Rainy days don't seem so wet. Stormy nights don't stay From the moment that we met You're worth the wait Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know
Talk for hours and never slept Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watch the sun as it slowly crept yeah. Was this bad last time? Yeah. What is it? Cellar? Yeah. I'm pretty sure. What? Or oh, pantry yeah. maybe? Pantry? It's on a hollow far it back could, it goes. Yeah. I read 150 people in the area, yeah. like, were, were working here out of here, but I don't know how we lived in this. I don't even know if this was a residence or not. There's a there's a postmaster's house somewhere too, isn't there? Like a wooden house. Uh, maybe that way. Yeah. Have a look, see if we can find. There should be another building around here somewhere. I'm pretty sure. And there's some graves to have a look at. And then we might. But find somewhere to roll out the swags and camp for the evening. Cool, later. Oh, yeah, it is. I love looking around a bit of history. It's like, yeah. But yeah, you just, just see how it all comes together. Big archways. I love the archways they've got. The yeah. windows and stuff. It's like, yeah, it's really good, isn't it? It's well put together. And this will be stand, still standing another hundred years, I reckon. I reckon it would. Yeah. Well, I'll kick on and see what else we can find, eh? Oh yeah, there, I can see the old building there. It's stone, old stone building and they built the fishing shacks around it. Wow, there's some huge whale bones there. Old 40 series under the shed, have a look at that. Huge whale bones, eh? Yeah. So there is the cottage we're looking for. Cook's Cottage, Glencoe, 1883. Oh, that's awesome. Seen better days, but be some history in this thing. Imagine all the noises sleeping in this thing. The creaking and groaning of the old timbers and the old roof. Outhouse. Stone shed. That's pretty cool. That's really cool. Old PDO winch on the front. Welded advice on there for made his own brush bars, makeshift Max Trax holders on top. Very cool. Rio Bar roof rack. This thing is wicked. Very cool. Anyway, it's getting to lunchtime, and we're going to find somewhere to pull up for the evening, roll those swags out, get dug in. I'm on dinner tonight and uh, I've got a little treat for the boys for the last night. Hopefully it's not food poisoning. <laughs> well, we pushed on a bit further actually and um, we're sort of halfway on the way home. But we pulled up for the night and we're on a free camp we found on Wiki Camps. It's okay. Uh, no, do you know what? It's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, there's yeah. no one else here. This is and why, we, <laughs> why we like it so much. Yeah. That's, that's good. And I'm on dinner, so we've set up swags. Really like quick set up because we want to get away fairly early in the morning. So no awnings, no party lights or any of the rest of it. And we'll probably do a pack down before we go to bed. So chairs will go away. So it's literally just the swags. But tonight I'm on dinner. And look, probably in the past, I've gotten a little bit carried out, carried away with taking silly things camping, like ice machines, um, kegerators, like all sorts of stupid stuff air that fryers. you don't need, air fryers. So I'm trying to bring it back to basics and not go too silly with taking outrageous things. So I brought a pizza oven away. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do pizzas tonight. I got some pre-made bases from Woolies and we're going to do two different styles of pizzas. One of them's like a supreme kind of thing, which I'm going to make now. And the next one is going to be like a garlic prawn seafood one. The prawns expired yesterday. Wonderful. Wait. <laughs> they were in my fridge that was... Um, 
probably not set cold enough when we took off. So we're probably gonna get food poisoning, but that's why we saved this till the last night. We'll be all right. The, 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 I end up freezing the prawns in Aaron's freezer, so the expiry, it carries on, doesn't it? Isn't that how it works? Uh, let's hope so. We'll yeah. find out tomorrow. We'll be fine. It was a best before anyway, not a yeah. used before. So we'll be right. And then on top of that, they were still frozen when we got here. So we're actually defrosting them in the travel buddy, the travel buddy yeah. which is probably, I mean, we haven't done a food handling course on this, have we? Nah, she'll be right. Yeah. Want to hold that for me and I'll make this first pizza. Yeah, good for Tiff actually just sent me a, a, a picture, Duff. Yep. The kids are eating, uh, made their own pizzas tonight as well, and oh, they've nice. used these same bases. Actually, they used those ones as sourdoughs, and they said they're really good. Oh, yeah, you got two different types of them. Yeah, I wanted to try something different. So, a bit of that one. Oops, that lid's loose. Now nah, I'm filming something. Aaron's having a, a shower, and he's worried that he's naked, and we're going to play games with him. <laughs> hey. Nah, I'll get this done then. <laughs> Duffy does want to play games with me. <laughs> For this one, I was going to do pepperoni, Ooh. some red onion, a bit of green stuff. Now, you and me, we, we like jalapenos. Aaron doesn't like do. anything spicy. We so we're going to do half and half, I think. No, three quarters. <laughs> yeah. Two. Yep. Again, only for you and me. Yep. I'm sure he says he likes chili. Nah, I'm pretty sure he doesn't. We're going to be able to see which half is his. Mm. Ah, well, he'll get a surprise. Alright. That'll that do. Good. Mm. See if we can do this. A couple of minutes, mate. Ooh, that's actually on the cheese. Ooh. See how that goes. Well, we've got garlic bread going as well in the back of the travel buddy. Do you want to check those prawns for me and maybe just check the garlic bread too? If the garlic bread can hold on another 10 minutes, that, or five minutes, that would be handy. But I can pull the prawns out now, if they're done. So yeah, that should only take about five minutes. Yeah, garlic bread All right, cool. How are the prawns? Uh, frozen prawns are... Still frozen. Just, are they? Just a little bit, yeah. Oh, I may be bagging back in for another five yeah. then. That's probably pulling the heat from the travel buddy down, hey? Garlic bread's almost there. Hey, what I'll do when I get home tomorrow, I'll run through all the um, stats and stuff, like how many Ks we did, how much fuel we used. I'll, uh, I'll be able to tell you, because um, Tony, me, and Aaron all use slightly varying amounts of fuel. Um, so I'll be able to give you a, a range that you can do this at a trip yourself if you ever want to. Yeah, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, how much water did you use? Oh, it's only that much, really. Is this night five? This is night four. Night four, yeah. So I brought fresh water and I've only had showers, so it's only that much, really. Yeah. I think it's done quite well. We've all had showers every night. I don't, I don't know this tank here, you already touched it. Mm. So what did you take away, 30 litres of water? 35 and a 20. Yeah. yeah. But you use the bucket, don't you? I've, I've used about 10 litres and probably 5 yeah. litres out of that. So maybe 15, 20 litres, <laughs> if that. And I reckon... Good showers, so... I reckon I've used the same. I reckon I've only used maybe 20, 25 litres. Yeah. Um, and I take 80 away. This is a good little test because all of us want to do um, the Simpson Desert together. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Which is going to be a longer trip. <laughs> so we are kind of trying to suss out how meals and stuff are going to work. I like the way we do this, where we all take a turn cooking each night. Oh, it's so easy, isn't it? Yeah, and it's less room in your fridge as well. Oh, so much. I've got so much room in my fridge and just doing one meal. And everyone else does some. The only thing is, you've got to make sure that you coordinate who's doing what and in what order you're going to eat. Because if you, like for instance, <clears throat> we did smash burgers the second night, we knew that we had to eat them early on because you want the, the brioche buns to be fresh. So once you've sorted that, it works all right. You want to hold that? Uh, that looks well done. Nice. Yeah, man. I'll get that cut up. You guys can start smashing it. Where's, I reckon, the chilli? Oh, I've seen some chilli across flakes. there, eh? Ooh. That looks like chilli there. Yeah. Right, eh? Let's do it. It's okay. You try a bit? Yeah, I'll hold that, you try. Could be hot. Probably will be. Oh, that's the, you want these bits on that side. Because you don't want chilli. Yep. That's the half across there. Let's give it a go. Good, man. Is it alright? Oh, yeah, really nice. Oh, good. Mm. 
Yeah, really nice. Oh, good, man. Yeah, that's wicked. Fantastic. Not bad. Well. I'll show you what I'm doing with the other one. The other one's going to be a one that Tiff and I used to always cook, actually. It's a, a garlic prawn one. It's pretty good. Right, Peronese and garlic. Everyone like garlic? Yeah. It's got a bit in it. This may or may not be the one that gives you food poisoning. Mm. Oh, you're right. Right. Red onion. Tiff will be watching going, you forgot this, you forgot that. Probably. Mm. Good amount of cheese. Cupy. And then when it comes out, fresh basil on top. Beautiful. Cool. Let's see how it goes. And then we'll probably have a Frankenstein one with whatever's left, eh? Yeah. Sounds good. Oh yeah, it's ready. Tony, you want to hold that for me? Yeah. Here we go. You'll have to let me know what you think of this one, boys. By the way, both yeah, the lads fine. on camera are like, oh yeah, this pizza's okay. Off camera. Oh, this is delicious. <laughs> Playing it cool. Let's go. It yeah, looks good. Russian roulette now. Yeah. Don't you worry, no one's getting sick. Today, it's a model. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We're not going to have to share a toilet. There is no toilet. <laughs> Fancy, do a little bit up here. And for me and you, Duff. Ooh. The good shit. Alright, let's do it. One in four chance. Can you try? Oh, don't be a big sore. Are you blowing up the basil? Oh, really? What a waste that was. Chilly one. Yeah. Oh, not that one. <laughs> Get out. I think the prawn's still alive. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it's definitely not still alive. It's good. Is it alright? Uh -huh. How's the prawn taste? Before I try it. Oh, you dropped yours on purpose, didn't you? Nice flavour to it, yeah. Good? Yeah. Alright, cool. Right, I'm going to leave it here. But I will see you guys back in my office and I'll chat to you about a few statistics and stuff to help you plan your own trip out here if you want to do it. Thank you boys for coming out with me. Thank you guys for a wonderful trip. It's been good. Thank you. It's been really good. Mm, really enjoyed it. And we'll all do it together again soon. Yep. Same crew, different food, different cocktails. Hopefully Duffy remembers to bring one. Yeah, granted. I've, yeah. Got, I've got the cocktail, I just didn't bring it. Did you? Yeah. All right, better be bloody good. Oh, well, Because we... you're building it up now across two trips. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should have kept me mouth shut. All right, I'll check back with, in with you in the morning. Cheers, guys. Cannot believe that nobody died of food poisoning. <laughs> I've got a few um, facts and figures and stuff for you from this trip um, that I promised I'd run through with you. So in total, we did four nights, five days, and we'd actually planned to do five nights, six days, but we just ended up doing the trip a little bit quicker than expected, so we came home a night early. Uh, in total, we did 2,075 kilometers, uh, the off-road portion of that trip was 350 k's and the longest distance between servos for getting fuel was 362 kilometers. Average cost of diesel was $2.20 and uh, in its entirety for that trip I spent $715 on diesel to do those 2,075 k's. So it cost me a bit of coin to do that trip. Uh, average on-road fuel economy was 14.5 liters per hundred. And if you think about the fact that I've got a 110 litre diesel tank on my Land Cruiser, that gives me an effective on-road range of about 750 kilometres, which is quite limiting, I think. Off-road, I was getting 22 litres per 100 for that 350 k's off-road, and I would have been in high range that entire time. I don't think there was any low range work at all. Again, if you think about the fact that I've only got a 110 litre fuel tank, that gives me uh, a 500 kilometer range off-road. 22 liters per 100 off-road is almost exactly what I've been finding that I'm getting towing the caravan too. So again, 
towing the van, I've got about a 500k um, effective fuel range, which is just, it's just not enough. So I, I definitely need to put a long range tank on that cruiser for the sort of traveling that I'm doing. And I really wanted to put a poly tank on it like I had on the D-Max, but ARB um, haven't got one coming out for six to nine months from what I'm hearing. So I may have to put a steel tank on the cruiser, but I'm not too sure yet. Anyway, interesting every time, because we're doing the exact same trip, traveling at the same speed, doing the same Ks, we're on the same road, same time, same temperature, all the rest of it. It was really interesting, interesting to see that every time I filled my car up at the servos, I'd run around and have a look at how much fuel Aaron was putting in in his V8 79 series and how much fuel Duffy was putting into his five cylinder Ford Ranger. And I found almost every time there was about a 10% difference between those three cars. So if I was putting 70 liters into my 300, Aaron was putting 77 liters into his uh, V8 79 series, and Duffy was putting 63 liters into his uh, Ford Ranger. So roughly 10% either way for the, for the three vehicles, which shocked me, because I thought the Ford Ranger um, would probably get significantly better economy, and I thought that the V8 Cruiser would probably be significantly worse. So interesting that they were pretty much, much of a muchness. 10% either way is not a hell of a lot. Anyway, um, also, if you're wondering in terms of water, for fresh water, we all roughly used about 30 litres each, which is about what I would expect. I can normally bank off using about 10 litres of water per day, and that gives me a little bit extra. That's enough for drinking, for showering every day, for washing dishes, washing hands, etc. That's not to say that you should be planning remote trips with only 10 litres of water per person per day. Um, but that's realistically about what I'm using. It's always a good idea to carry a little bit more just in case you get stuck out somewhere or you lose a water tank or, or whatever. On that note, that trip was quite remote. Uh, it was only 2000K round trip from Perth, so it wasn't a, a huge distance. But when you consider that over the three days that we spent in the off-road section, we were a couple of hundred Ks from the nearest sort of civilization, and that's not a town. We're a couple of hundred Ks just from... Um, roadhouses or servos, They're a hell of a, a lot longer away from any sort of real township. And those three days off road, we only saw one other um, group of campers. So when you can compare that to, you know, trips like the Gib River Road or the Simpson Desert or Cape York or something like that, um, although we're not doing huge distances and we're not really far away, it is quite remote country. So um, it pays to be prepared. Uh, we didn't have cell signal the entire time that we were out there in that off-road section. There's no cell signal at all. So if you're planning to do a trip like that, just be really prepared. Watch the weather, make sure you've got heaps of spares, heaps of tools, heaps of water, and a means of communication um, and some first aid kit and the know-how and, and how to use it. Anyway, that's about it. I've got a few more trips in the pipeline uh, already planned that I'm gonna film and share with you guys as well. I really enjoyed filming this one and sharing it with you. Thank you for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs> I think this was built for giants, the size of the doorway. I know, it's massive. It's huge, I, yeah. Yeah. Nice though. Well, not everyone's four foot nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, please. Duff's on lunch. What do you cook this, mate? Oh, sausage roll and pies. Delicious. Well, I used to Good. come in here then from the jetty. What did he offload? Boats, mate. Boats would come up to it. Just boats, that's it. Nothing <laughs> offload, nothing. Don't know, man. G'day, guys. Cam Wild Wild Touring. G'day, guys. Cam Wild Wild Touring. G'day, guys. Cam Wild Wild Touring.